Uh, my name is David Winslow. I've worked for the Bureau of Rec Reclamation for almost 34 years. Uh, I've got a lot of experience with um, reclamation. Go ahead and kick the next one. Uh, the Bureau of Reclamation is a water uh, development, water management agency for the federal government. We were established in 1902 uh, with the idea of providing water to the West. Unlike the East, most of the water we have in the West is not in places where people are. In order to provide that water to farmers, to cities, to, to make life uh, worthwhile and, and really possible in the West, what we needed to do was collect that water and, and move it to where it needed to go. Over the last 115 years, we've created uh, almost 500 dams from large facilities like Hoover Dam, which is just outside of uh, the area here, to Grand Coulee, uh, Glen Canyon Dam, which is the one we'll talk about, to very small diversion dams. We also have uh, 337 reservoirs associated with those dams and store, have a storage capacity combined of nearly 250 million acre feet. Our hydro plants uh, produce over 40 billion kilowatt hours annually. So when you turned on the light this morning and when you took a shower, the water and the power probably came from reclamation sources. Uh, we are the largest wholesaler of hydropower and we also, uh, our water irrigates 10 million acres and provides, and from those 10 million acres comes 60% of the uh, vegetables and 25% of fruits and nuts on an annual basis for the entire nation. So what's it like without water? Next. This is Caldwell, Idaho in 1940. 1940 wasn't that long ago. And yet you can see here, life is pretty primitive. Uh, part of what reclamation does is that we provided water, we provided power to make farms productive, to make life possible. Next. As a historical point of reference, uh, the dam we're going to talk about today was the concrete was finished in 1963. Uh, next slide. Another significant event occurred in 1963. Uh, for those of you who remember it, and it looks like there may not be too many of us, that was the same year that uh, uh, President Kennedy was, was shot and assassinated. Next. From a, 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 a size or volume point of reference, the Great Pyramid in Egypt, 455 feet tall. Hoover Dam and Glen Canyon Dam are one and a half times as tall. The volume of material in Hoover Dam is approximately the same as in uh, Hoover Dam, or excuse me, as in the pyramid, the Great Pyramid. Glen Canyon Dam is 50%. There's 50% more concrete in that, in that structure, nearly 5 million cubic yards. This is Glen Canyon. This was in 1983, this photo. And at that time, because of uh, specific uh, environmental conditions, there was a massive amount of water that actually flowed into uh, Glen Canyon. And you can see there, you can see water coming out of, uh, there are four bypass tubes, and also we have spillways on both sides. We are running as much water through that facility as we can. Massive amount of water. Next. It's a large facility. Next. Here you'll notice uh, one of the scanning personnel, one of David's coworkers, standing on top of this dam. It's nearly a third of a mile in length. Next. Uh, this photo, the next few photos give you an idea of just scale. This is actually both of us hanging out there on that little walkway on the side of the, the canyon wall. Next. Uh, 
This is another access point for measurement. Next. Here we are again on top of the power plant. Next. Inside this facility, we have a lot of water. We have foundation tunnels where we collect seepage. Dams do not stop water, they just slow it down. And so as we collect this water and move it uh, away from, it, it makes it possible. Next. These four bypass tubes uh, have a capacity of 25,000 cubic feet per second. Next. Since this was built over 50 years ago, we have 10,000 drawings associated with this facility. Managing a facility with 10,000 drawings is impossible. We can no longer do that. That's why we created this project. Next. And the project was to create a comprehensive model, a group of models, so that we could manage, we could operate, we could maintain on a much better, much more um, logical method. We can no longer to we we can no longer um, afford to actually manage this in the old ways. The way we've always done it is no longer applicable. We have to move forward. We're moving to the 21st century. This project with Autodesk is what's making that possible. Next. At first, we established, we, we found all of the control points. And as we found those and worked on them, I even brought in, next, surveyors. So we went through and we established tight ground control to make sure that we knew exactly where we were. We, we tied in with GPS points. So David Dress with Autodesk. Um, we started our, our data collection and did as many types of technology as we could. Um, uh, photogrammetry, aerial LIDAR, I'm sorry, aerial photogrammetry, uh, LIDAR, and sonar. So we brought out a number of scanners. Uh, more scanners equals less time on site. Uh, 330 meter range on the scanners and we captured a little bit of everything. Um, we're not uh, biased to one scanner over another, so we did bring uh, some ZNF, some Pharaohs, um, but captured as much as we could uh, in a short period of time. Uh, we had uh, amazing access to this site, so Dave kind of just gave us the keys, gave us a person to help us out, and really um, we climbed everywhere we could. And it was, it was the best. I had so much fun, and the whole crew really did too, to be able to get to a, a site like this. It's, uh, you know, you don't usually get to get out to do something like that. Um, all the vantage points we can get to, high, low, um, down the dam, we wanted to capture um, as much as we could, and more data is always better. And uh, the sheer scale of this facility is just, it's, it's all, I mean, you, you stand there, and this really doesn't do uh, justification on how big it really is. That grassy field at the bottom, that's two football fields. It's just massive. Uh, inside the generator room, uh, we wanted to you know, capture the steel structure. We were looking at the generators, where everything is at, because we're going to build a model of this. Uh, we worked with the bureau on every single scan, and um, we wanted to convey to the customer um, how, how we're capturing the data um, in every process. So by the end of this project, they were really scanning themselves even though they're, they're engineers. Um, so even, even an engineer can scan. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Uh, inside the penstock, scanner doesn't matter. Day, daylight, um, darkness, we capture data inside of that. Um, this was actually open. They're, they come out like once every 30 years. This is inside one of the turbines. We got to scan it. So if there was ever an issue, we now have a point cloud of that turbine. We can rebuild it while it's still running and build another one. Mm, used Recap uh, Pro to do all of our registration. Uh, total of about 707 scans. We're on site for five, five and a half days. Um, we took so long to actually do that. Normally, we could do that in just a two days but the site was so massive, we spent about a day and a half just in logistics, climbing around the dam. Some of those longer range scans that we took, we took them at a higher resolution, so some of them took an hour and a half, two hours for just a single, single scan. A few images here of the point cloud, so actual point cloud data um, of some of these, uh, of the facility. Um, looks like an image, just a picture. This is not rendered out, this is just a snapshot inside a recap. Um, no, having this data to, for the Bureau really is, uh, we believe, invaluable. You can't go up there with a tape measure 
and measure this many points or go multi-level without having some, some play or some um, loss of integrity of data. So um, quick section view of the generator that's, that's pulled out inside the pen stock all the way down to the base floor of the dam. So Dave here did a lot of the heavy lifting. As I said, we worked very closely with the Bureau, um, really climbed all over the dam. Um, this is the, uh, the spillways, and uh, we were actually able to capture um, inside the dam, outside the spillways, everything. A few more images. Spillway is dry, which is great for scanning because scanners can't capture water. So um, able to see um, what everything looks like. We can do some volume calculations off of this. Uh, we can take some scans in the future, maybe after the water comes through, to see if there was any erosion or whatnot. So this is our snapshot in time. <clears throat> Excuse me. A few more images. Scanned it again. Not rendered out. Just a snapshot. Um, you know, images like this really, to me, are very powerful. We've got, you know, the bolt pattern. If we need to rebuild any of this, we now have a laser scan data that we can build it off of. Uh, we did some upstream sonar, we'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, just a section of, this is actually the water here, and then the dam face, and uh, bridge, and whatnot. So, a um, lot of data, right? We're looking at about uh, 25 billion points, because it's half the point cloud. Um, <clears throat> dam face, we can see all the cracks in the dam face, so if we need to do any crack studies, volume, how much uh, concrete do we need to replace where it's at, and do that type of inspection from the point cloud. So, big scale, right? It's, uh, it's just a huge project. Um, five days on site, really, to capture all of that, it's pretty, pretty amazing. So, that was laser scanning. The photogrammetry model. Um, so, we're not allowed to fly drones. It's a national infrastructure, so we rented a helicopter. Um, Pete Kelsey uh, strapped himself in and leaned out the side of this helicopter and risked his life <laughs> for uh, a photogrammetry model. Standard DSLR camera, dropped the photos into Remake, took a, a total of about 707 pictures, and came up with an amazing photogrammetry model. And this, zero editing, dropped it into the project, ran for 22 hours since we're running off the cloud, uh, no cloud services on this, and came up with a photogrammetry model. One hour in total, flight time from the time they took off to the time they landed. So we're allowed to fly inside, uh, inside the dam because we're inside the facility. Uh, we did a little photogrammetry. We took some video, a um, little nerve-wracking to fly inside a facility with a drone with no sensors. But it was, it was fun. You know, it was a, a way to capture data quickly. Uh, it takes a lot longer to laser scan. This whole generator room took us um, about two days for one person to capture. Um, we flew the drone down, did some photogrammetry. Obviously, accuracy is a bit different, but inside the generator, uh, we can capture some photogrammetry, rebuild some, some of the facility from that as well. In order to capture as much data as we could and, and try out many different technologies, we actually even included sonar with this. The question the facility, pe the facility managers uh, posed to us was, Tell us about uh, sediment in front of the dam. How much is there? Is it collecting? And, and we actually have about 300 feet of water here. Um, we don't know what the condition is at the bottom of all that. So it, as part of this, the second week, we had a contractor come in uh, with their ROV. Next. Set up a base station. We had a, a, a chasing boat that went with it that the operator sat in. Next. It moved around the, uh, the area close to the dam and up to the buoy line. And all this information was then uh, was instantaneously uploaded to the base station where the operator is seeing all of the information, uh, making sure that it, the ROV is going in the, at the correct lo location. They're getting enough overlap. This is the data we receive back. It's themat thematically colored. You can see depths here. Um, and what we found out was is that there's very little uh, sediment at this point in time. We have, uh, we're expecting the lifetime of this reservoir to be between four and 700 years, 400 and 700. And 
what we found from this scan uh, reveals that we're right on track. Great. So we had to do something with that data. Um, we can't serve as a facility with just a point cloud. So we wanted to create an intelligent BIM model. Uh, we, we tasked out, we ran out and used Revit and took that, uh, all the uh, pieces of structure and reverse engineered it using Revit. Um, overlaid the point cloud, did uh, feature extracted, extraction using um, Qubit to pull out some of our standard structures, and then created custom family objects for some of the upper structure. So uh, in total, we spent about 35 days modeling a single person. Um, we spent uh, about an eighth of that time just doing project setup. So we had zero templates to start with. We wanted to create a custom template uh, to move forward. So it, this is a repeatable process. And whoever is using it, whether they're technical or not, they can come and serve these sheets and go through the project. So um, quick little rendering outside of Revit, or inside of Revit with the point cloud. And whenever you're looking at a point cloud and a model together, they should look like they're in the same spot. Otherwise, it wasn't modeled correctly. So our future development is to continue to move these models forward. To, as we design new components, as we add new systems, all of this information will go into these models. That facility was originally designed with this. For those of you who know what this is, this was the computer that they had 50 years ago. Uh, slide rules. We don't need to use these anymore. We can. There's no reason for us to be managing this. Next one. These old 2D drawings, we need to do better. Here you can see part of the point cloud superimposed upon an old drawing. This is where we have to go. This is what we're doing to move forward. Next. So the benefits to reclamation. We are able to move forward with these facilities that will be around for hundreds of years. They will long outlast any of us here in this room. They need to be maintained. They need to be operated. They need to be upgraded so that they continue to be an asset to the nation. So with that, um, I'd like to open up for some questions. Uh, we've got a quick fly through of the point cloud uh, to give you a sense and feel of the facility itself. Um, again, not rendered out. This is just a, a walk through of the facility.